you actually when you think about it daniel had committed himself to a devotional life of prayer before darius the king was born think about that daniel had committed himself to serving god worshiping god following god obeying god living a righteous life before Darius the king was born. And so Daniel was thinking, look at this young boy, just 62 years of age. And I am 87 years of age. And I'm 25 years older than this king. And before he was born, I was already born again, serving the Lord. How would an old man like myself, who had already committed myself to the Lord, already saved, already sanctified, already committed to the Lord, already see the vision of the Lord before this young man was born? How will this young man now make a decree? And I'll be afraid of his decree. And then I will abandon the worship of the Lord that I've been practicing before he was born. Never. Everybody say never. You know, sometimes you have some people, you've been following after the Lord, you have, you know, prayed, you have been saved and sanctified and spirit-filled, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you've been studying the scriptures. You've committed your life to the Lord for so many years, and then somebody that was born yesterday, somebody that just came into this world a few years ago, you know, makes a decree. And that little fellow wants to destroy your conviction, your commitment that you have had before he was born. God forbid. I said, God forbid. You know, that's why Daniel said, no, this little boy of 62 years of age that just came, whatever his title and position, and made a decree, no, it cannot be. I will not allow this little one to hinder me. Whatever the alliance then may mean, I'm going to go on. We're going to go on in Jesus' name. And so that's why the new decree could not stop Daniel from praying. Daniel was not accused, was accused of not regarding the king. But they were the people that were to accuse that they didn't regard the king of kings and the lord of lords. He was also accused of not regarding the decree which the king had signed. But they should be accused of not regarding the law, the decree, the doctrine of the king of kings that changes not. The Lord is telling us that we, whatever the persecution and whatever the problem, we should keep on serving the Lord, persecution will come. I said persecution will come. But when it comes, make sure you are standing. You will stand. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're looking at verse from verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience, my persecutions and afflictions which came unto me at Antioch at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, again, the Lord delivered me, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? Shall suffer persecution. Why are you surprised when persecution comes? Why are you surprised when the pain, the pressure of the persecutors, when those things come upon you. Haven't you read the word of God? It says, yes, yea. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. And has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Continue. Will you continue? We shall continue. We'll come back to Daniel chapter 6. Point number 2. Daniel's, Daniel chapter 6 from verse 18. The deliverance and the protection of the righteous. Daniel chapter 6 verse 18. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him. 
and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And then he came to the den, and when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel. Are the angels still there? Are they still protecting the people of God? Yes, they still do. And therefore, that's why you don't have any fear, you don't have any discouragement, because the Lord will still send his angels, and you'll be protected in Jesus' name. Verse 22, my God has sent his angel, and has shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me for as much as before thee, before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him. And commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no manner of hurt was found upon him. Because, because, because he believed in his God. He believed in his God. And you believe today, don't you? And as you believe, the Lord will protect you in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 3, verse 29. Therefore I make a decree that every people and nation and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be caught in pieces, and their houses shall be made a donkey because there is no other God. God that can deliver after this sort. There is no other God that can deliver after this sort. I want you to look to remember all the miracles in the Bible. Any miracle you read about in the Bible and compare all the other religions of the world that are trying to attract you and they're saying, abandon your faith. Abandon Christianity and come to this other one. Is there any other God? Is there any other religion that can deliver after this sort? The Red Sea that was parted in two for the people of Israel to pass over. Any other religion where you've seen that? No other religion. And then the manner that came those 40 years every day for those millions of people. Any other religion? No other religion. And the water that came out of the rock, any other religion, no other religion. And then for God himself to stop the sun when Joshua prayed, any other religion, no other religion. And then for the Lord Jesus Christ had died and then rose again on the third day, any other founder of religion, no, never. And because that even in this case, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you see the assurance that came, and even the Cardinals himself said, there is no other God. And it's no other religion where you can have such a deliverance like this. That's why those of us who are following after Christ, that's why we stay with Christ. We're going to abide in Christ. Because there's no other way. This is the way. It's higher, higher, above any other way, any other person you can think about. And Nebuchadnezzar said there's no other God that can deliver after, like, as a sword, after this sword. And the same thing will launch a day that the Lord still delivers. He'll deliver the people of God in Jesus' name. Psalm 31, Psalm 31. I'm reading from verse 23, verse 24. Psalm 31, verse 23. O oh, love the Lord, all ye saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful. Daniel was faithful. The Lord preserves the faithful. And then it says, and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and it shall strengthen your heart. And all ye, all ye that hope in the Lord, let your hope remain in the Lord. Our God will not fail. I said that God will not fail. You know what Daniel said? He has sent his angel. And he has shut the lion's mouth so that they could not hurt me. Let's look at Psalm 34, verse 7. Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivers them. The angel of the Lord 
encampeth round about them that fear him, and he delivers them. The ministry of angels you'll find from Genesis Revelation. As you look at Genesis, you'll find angels ministering to the people of God. As you come to Revelation, you'll find many, many chapters, in many chapters, where those angels minister. And in between Genesis and Revelation, you'll find great, great ministries of those angels. Angels are mighty in power. Angels are faithful to the Lord. Angels are so mighty and powerful, and they are sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. An angel ministered and guided in the choice of Rebekah for Isaac. An angel encouraged and strengthened Gideon in his great task and commission when the Lord wanted him to overcome the Midianites. An angel destroyed 185,000 billion enemies of God's people in one night. An angel fed and strengthened Elijah at the time of his distress, discouragement, and discouragement. An angel shot the lion's mouth in the den, and Daniel's life was protected and preserved by a for a prophetic ministry. An angel appeared unto Zechariah to announce the birth of John the Baptist. An angel appeared to Mary the Virgin to reveal the coming of Christ our Savior, our Lord. An angel guided Philip to lead the eunuch, to lead the eunuch of Ethiopia to salvation in Christ. An angel opened the prison doors and released the apostles to preach all the words of this life. An angel delivered Peter from imprisonment and death and smote Herod, the great enemy of the church. Angels still minister to the people of God today. And when you get into trouble, you may not see those angels, but they are there. I say they are there. That's why we read in Psalm 91. Psalm 91, you look at what the Lord himself has said. And you see that he still gives his angels charge over us. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Well, give his angels charge over you so that you'll be kept in all your ways in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. The ministry of angels for the people of God. And that ministry still continues today. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. It says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Let's come back to Daniel and pick up a one important word there. One important word that Darius said when he saw what the Lord had done. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, we're looking at verse 27. He delivereth and rescueth. He worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. And he has delivered Daniel. He has delivered Daniel. He will deliver you. He has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. I want you to now turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 33. Hebrews 11 verse 33. He delivered Daniel. Why? Because he had faith in God. And as you believe in the Lord, the Lord himself, by that faith, you'll be delivered from every persecution in Jesus' name. Every trial, every temptation, every trouble that comes against your life, deliverance is certain. I said deliverance is certain. Or oh, is Satan greater than God? Is Pharaoh greater than God? Is Herod greater than God? Is Darius greater than God? Those presidents and princes, are they greater than God? The persecutors, are they greater than God? Your enemies, are they greater than God? No. Why should we fear any human enemy there? When we have the supernatural power and protection and promise of the Lord standing by us and staying by us, we're going to overcome in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. Hebrews 11, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. Whatever the storm, whatever the challenge, and whatever the persecution, whatever the pain, 
and whatever the affliction, hold on to your faith. Your faith will see you through. Go through faith, subdued kingdoms. You know, that's what the devil wants to fight in your life. But you know what Daniel did? Although they tried to take everything he had from him, his liberty, they tried to take that away. And they tried to take away his convenience and everything. And they carried him and they threw him to the lion's den. But he kept his faith. Whatever this world takes away from you, if they do not take the faith away from you, your faith will make you to overcome. Because he believes in the Lord his God. It's through faith. And whatever is happening, whatever the persecutors are plotting, whatever the pain, the pressure, whatever trouble it may be, if you will keep your faith, whatever those persecutors do, whatever they plan or plot, if you will keep your faith and you do not trade with your faith, bargain or batter your faith, and say, this faith, I'm going to keep this faith, you'll subdue kingdom. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions. Stopped the mouths of lions. The Lord will preserve us in Jesus' name. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17, verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4. What did he do from verse 17? Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. The Lord will stand by you. And strengthened me. That by me the preaching might be fully known. Think about that. Think about that. You know, Daniel, if you look up here for a moment. Daniel had had vision. That he had not recorded. That he had not written down that he had not said to all the people of Israel. And Daniel had had a dream that he had not recorded. In fact, the whole book of Daniel had not been given to the people of God from chapter 1 to chapter 12. And before the revelation of everything we have in Daniel, before it came, because if they had written it, they would have seen everything being written down. But when that thing had not been done, they wanted to cut short his life. So that the revelation God wanted to pass through Daniel unto the whole world of all these generations. So that that revelation will not come. You know what the devil is trying to fight you? There's a revelation the Lord wants to give us through you. There's a ministry the Lord wants to minister through you. There is a one the Lord wants to do through you. There is something. He wants to deliver many people, save many people, sanctify many people, heal many people, deliver many people through your revelation and through that vision coming from God unto you. And that has not been done yet. That's why the devil is fighting your life, but he will not succeed. You see, you, you see what Paul the Apostle is saying here. He said, notwithstanding the Lord stood by with me and strengthened me that by me. The reason why he strengthened me and the reason why he protected me and the reason why he has preserved me and the reason he didn't allow the persecution, the persecutors to overwhelm me, overcome me and destroy me. The reason is that by me, the preaching might be fully known. And saw so that God wanted to reveal through Daniel had not been fully known. And the Lord said, no, the lions will not swallow up Daniel with the revelation. They're not going to destroy Daniel with the revelation. If you commit yourself to serving the Lord and to worshiping the Lord, everything the Lord wants to give to the world through you will have it in Jesus' name. And it is when you commit yourself to the ministry. That the Lord will say, no, I will not allow this one to die. I will not allow any lion to destroy this one because I have something I want to give to the church. I have something I want to give to the world through him or through her. That by me, the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. Paul the Apostle said that the Lord is going to deliver me and preserve me because the Gentiles need to hear. And the Gentiles have not heard. And what the devil is trying to do is so that the Gentiles will not hear the word of salvation and the word of eternal life. So that the Gentiles will not know that Jesus Christ died for them. And so that they will not get to heaven. That's why the devil wanted to cut short the life of Paul the Apostle. But he said, the Lord has stood by me and the Lord has preserved me so that by me all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered. Tell me the rest. 
Again, verse 17, latter part, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Paul the apostle said, the lions were after me too. So that I'll not be able to give the revelation. I'll not be able to give the knowledge of salvation to the world. But I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. The Lord will deliver you. Do you have any work to do for God? I said, do you have any ministry to accomplish for the Lord? Any teaching you want to give on behalf of the Lord? Are you holding to the doctrines of the Bible? And do you want to evangelize and tell other people of the way of salvation? Tell me, answer me. If you want to do that, the Lord is going to preserve you so that through you, all those Gentiles, all those sinners, all those unbelievers, through you, they will hear the gospel. And therefore, the lion will not be able to swallow you up. Verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We come to point number three now. Point number three, I want to see in this point number three, the destiny and the perdition of the reprobates. So we're looking at Daniel chapter 6 and verse 24. Daniel chapter 6. And we're looking at verse 24. Daniel chapter 6, verse 24. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Think about that. And the king commanded, why did the king do this? His eyes were now opened. Now the king saw through their deception. Now the king saw through their jealousy and their envy. Ah, so this is what you wanted to do. You wanted to kill the man that has revelation. The man that has a ministry. The man that God has used to preserve this kingdom. Think about this now. You're thinking about the life of Daniel. It was through Daniel that all those magicians and all those Chaldeans, all those wise men of Babylon, it was through Daniel they were not killed because Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he said, if anybody will tell me the interpretation, then I'll preserve your life and promote you. If you don't give me the interpretation, every one of you will die. And then Daniel came and gave the interpretation. That's how they were preserved. Daniel was a preserver of life. And now, they wanted to destroy the preserver of life. You will remember Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar had another dream. He had forgotten it. And he said, I must have the interpretation to this. And the people said, tell us the dream will tell you the interpretation. He said, I've forgotten. And if you don't tell me, I'm going to kill every one of you. And I'm going to make your house easy. Don't heal. It was Daniel that came and then revealed the dream and the interpretation. And it preserved because of that. Their lives were preserved. They wanted to destroy this man that was a preserver of life. And then eventually in chapter 5 of Daniel, when Belshazzar had the writing on the wall, and nobody could read the writing. It was this Daniel that came, that read the writing, that interpreted that writing. They wanted to kill and destroy the interpreter of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And eventually, now we come to chapter 6, they plotted and planned that the revelation coming through Daniel to the people, the preservation coming through Daniel to the people, the power of the Almighty God coming through Daniel to the people, so that everything will be cut short. And eventually, when the king recognized that this was their plan, this was their program,